Hi world, Stephanie here again with another video for you today. I just posted a video about my opinion on what's happening with Ukraine and the world right now, talking about <clears throat> Cramp Bark, um, which is a plant that has rich folklore and history in the Ukraine and Russia. Verbenum opulus. So you might want to check that out if you're interested in plant medicine or politics. So this is part two of that video. I mentioned that I wanted to talk about Ian Levansant and a four-day free training that I'm doing right now through Hay House. Many of you probably know about Hay House through people like Louise Hay, for example, <clears throat> and learning about positive affirmations, positive self-talk, and a whole playground, a whole myriad worth of healing modalities and books and resources on those things. And so right now, they're offering a four a free day, a free four-day training on healing your feminine power. And today, this morning, I listened to Iyanla Vansant's speech. I know Iyanla Vansant <clears throat> from having read one of her books many, many moons ago, probably prior to when Liam was born even. I think that I found this book in a free pile at Goddard College one time, and it's called Yesterday I Cried by Ian Levansant. It has this beautifully soft, you know, one of those covers and the bindings falling apart. You know, that old book smell. Um, well, not antique, but you know, older book. <clears throat> and I bawled my eyes out when I read this book for the first time. And I've kept it ever since. You know, I've, I've followed some of her talks and teachings online over the years. And I remember that she is a Yorubu priestess, but I, I didn't, you know, I haven't studied with her personally and um, I'm not an expert <clears throat> in her teachings, but I love her energy and I love how she shares and I feel, you know, that feeling of admiration in my heart for her and wish nothing but the best to her and hers always with much love and cosmic sisterhood as possible and welcome for sure. So in her book today, I, I opened up to this as I realized that she was on the feminine power training with Hay House today, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what she said. And then hopefully if you're interested, you'll go and sign up for free <clears throat> online. And I always love to open up books to just see you know, what page, what wisdom it has to show for me. And so I'm going to read for you from her book, Yesterday I Cried, um, because I opened up to page 221, and beginning on 220 to 221, there is an, an excerpt there, a few paragraphs that touch me deeply in my heart and are akin to some of the feelings that I've been going through recently. And as someone who practices as a counselor and a healer of sorts, it's challenging to me, probably in an egoic way, of how can I walk through this life with struggles and challenges and reaching low points and also be able to be a light to others and helpful to others and just navigating through my own stuff like we all have to do. And so she says in here, starting on page 220, thank you, Miss Ian Levansant, high priestess, I'm not sure the most respectful way to address you. <clears throat> I wondered to myself if what I had discovered was true for everyone. I wondered how many people walk around totally unaware that there is another person another level in their being that is in total conflict with the ever emerging newness unfolding through their consciousness. How many people realize that there is an old you that has never forgotten? The old you has made choices and judgments of which the new you 
may be totally unaware. <clears throat> The old you is still afraid of things that the new you has long forgotten or never remembered. The old you has attachments based upon survival needs and fear, while the new you is courageously trying to break free and grow. The old you has found a comfortable place, a way of being, a safe place, and will fight to stay within that comfort zone. The new you recognizes the need to take risks, to move beyond the familiar, and is willing to do so. When the two states of consciousness are in conflict, the experience is frustration. Why does this keep happening? We ask, <clears throat> why can't I seem to move beyond this place, this experience? That had been my experience. I wondered if the same were true for everyone else. <clears throat> I felt a little embarrassed and a little ashamed. How can I run around trying to heal the world when I am still so wounded? Isn't that being dishonest? When I thought about it for a moment, I remembered <clears throat> what my godfather taught me. You can only teach what you need to learn. <laughs> then something Maya Angelou wrote came to mind. Take a day, take a day, blah, 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 take a day to heal yourself and then go and heal somebody else. Realizing how much I have learned, how much healing I have done, I knew that I had nothing to be ashamed of. <clears throat> All that I learn, I teach. All that I teach opens the way for deeper learning. Although it seemed that I was learning the same lesson over and over, I realized it was at a deeper level each time. Each level had a new way of looking at things. Each level offered an opportunity to put a theory into practice as a teaching tool and a standard of learning. <clears throat> Rhonda had mastered all of the wrong lessons. She was a master of living in pain, struggling for recognition, dishonoring herself, and covering up what she was feeling. She was trying to get my attention. Unfortunately, she had mastered the art of attracting negative attention, attention that caused her more pain, attention that further dishonored and devalued her. Unconsciously, I had embraced her patterns. I had failed to recognize and acknowledge them as they played out in my life. Rhonda had no concept of who Iyanla was. The life Iyanla knew had unfolded moment by moment as a function of her faith and what she believed about herself. In many of those moments, I, Iyanla, found myself running to catch up with my life. Things were growing and unfolding faster than I could imagine. Rhonda, the old me, was also running, trying to catch up. She did not want to be left again. More important, Rhonda was trying to figure out what was going on. Iyanla's ex experiences were totally foreign to her. Loving, caring people surrounded Iyanla because that is what she believed she deserved. Rhonda never knew love that was not attached to pain and suffering. Iyanla has an abundance of good things. Rhonda was taught not to expect good and that she did not deserve <clears throat> to have anything good. In response to what she had been taught, Rhonda expected the worst. And usually, that is what she experienced. Finally, I understood why Karen had come into my life. She had come to help me heal Rhonda. She had come to show me what Rhonda believed and to give me an opportunity for a deeper level of healing.
I had not done a good job of integrating Rhonda's experiences with Iyanla's experiences. I had not honored the role that Rhonda had played in Iyanla's emerging life. Had it not been for Rhonda, <sighs> Iyanla never would have been born. I needed to forgive myself for ignoring her and for being mad at Karen. <clears throat> I also needed to go back and see how the breakdown between Rhonda's consciousness and Iyanla's consciousness had occurred. Before I could do that, I needed to give Iyanla a little boost. There is something magical that occurs when a woman turns 40. She becomes more attractive in the sensual and seductive way. It's not that her body gets better, but I think she becomes more comfortable with her body and learns how to maneuver it better. At 40, a woman's eyes begin to sparkle, not with lust or excitement, but with wisdom. She has seen some things, done some things, and learned some things that show through her eyes. I love this book. At 40, although there are things on a woman's body that lie down, <laughs> at the same time, other things stand out. They become clear. A 40-year-old woman finds her voice, gets her vision and her footing. When I turned 40, I became too old to try to be somebody else. So I stopped trying. And that was on page 222, it ended, of Ian Levantzans. Yesterday I cried. Every time when I see this book, I just love this book. I always think today I cried because I cannot pick up this book without crying. Thank you, Iyanla, for being you and your experience and, you know, transforming it into the beauty and the love and the healing that you have transformed it into for yourself and the world. I, I honor you a deep bow to you if you ever see this video. And so today on the training that I was listening to, it was about how to embrace, embracing the underbelly of your feminine power. And so the four day training is all about embracing your feminine power, which for me is not only has been a conundrum, but, but like an opposing theme because many of us learned as girls, women growing up, that women weren't allowed to have power, that women, I learned this, or at least was part of what I learned, you know, we, we were meant to give our power to, to a man. And that may have been my misconstrued perception, or it may have just been that part of the culture that I grew up in. And so the idea of owning my own power, embracing my own power, loving my power, and loving all parts of myself was, in my opinion, entirely foreign to me. And oftentimes, you know, when I'm teaching skills to people or to myself or my son, I have to remember, we don't know things always automatically. You know, we're not born knowing certain skills like how to fix a car or electrical work, or we're not born even speaking. You know, you could, you could be born in a totally different country than your your genetic country of origin and you don't grow up speaking that language of your genetic um, terroir you know in not in a verbal way at least um, but you'd grow up speaking the verbal language of the land in which you grow up or the people that that raise you <clears throat> So many of us are learning new languages, we're learning new ways of being, we're learning new ways of, of loving ourselves. What is self-care? You know, what is self-love? What are human rights and what are our roles and responsibilities and abilities in 
cultivating and perpetuating a culture of peace and love um, versus one that is dominated by power, control, and abuse. I read this beautiful article today. Like for years, I never paid attention to celebrities. You know, I live pretty isolated in rural Vermont. I don't watch a lot of movies. Sorry, everyone. I love the ones that I have watched though. And I, and I love you all. And some of us may have felt that way, like a special, um, you know, um, connection or just a, a vibration or appreciating someone's jour de vivre like in, in the world. And so today I read an article on people um, about Cameron Diaz and how her life has changed since she stopped acting. And she had this beautiful, absolutely, you know, drop dead gorgeous photo of herself with no makeup on and just happy and like hanging out and glowing. Like you saw her soul, you know, and, and her soul and her heart made everything that much more beautiful. And I, and I believe and have said this for years, that, be, that celebrities, that people who are famous have the power of shifting culture, of shifting the paradigm in that way. And, and I guess apparently that doesn't make everybody in the world happy. But I think it can because I think even those people, even the people that abuse power and control, again, when we're applying psychology and even child psychology and internal family systems and looking at them and at their internal parts, that are wounded or exiled or need it, you know, if you watch my previous video, <laughs> have rabies, um, not literally, but figuratively, like, and how, what do we do with those parts and, and how each person is different. And her video just inspired me and, and touched my heart and encouraged me to even come on here today and make these videos. Um, I felt, you know, like in some in some level, I received that people rooting for me, that cheerleading and that collective big loving hug and embrace from the feminine power and healing my relationship with feminine power and healing my relationship with the global sisterhood that exists in this world, um, both on small scale levels and multiple different communities of interest, as well as on a global scale. And so women, we, we do have this power and part of embracing our power and healing our power also will heal men, also will heal children, also will heal the planet. And for anyone, regardless of your gender, you know, your gender of birth or your, your gender orientation now, regardless of gender at all, we all have to do our own work. And in that, there's also that synergistic or interdependent natural relationship between ourselves and a higher power, as well as, um, or your source, your belief, as well as a connection between ourselves and the community. And when we look at animals in the wild and in, you know, um, closed settings, the damage that is done to them mentally and emotionally that we observe through their behavior when they're isolated and when they, they don't have the healthy relationships that they need. And so we can use modern times, we can use technology to separate us or we can use it to connect us. And just like with all things, we learn to use it and we learn to wield these powers, tools, technologies and energies um, and ourselves, especially in, in ways I'm not, you know, I'm learning to do that in ways that are conducive to not only our own good, but the greater good of all beings because they're interconnected, right? And so we as women, I know I'm a day late, um, I'm catching up here. I tend to take up the rear anyways. It's, I don't know if it's a mothering instinct, I don't know what it is, but I just like to hold that space. And <clears throat> in light of International Women's Day, I guess I just wanna say thank you to all the women in my life, past, present, and future. Thank you to my mother, 
both physically, biologically, her name is Karen, as well as the mothers, the many, many, many mothers of my soul and my spirit and my heart on this planet, um, in the, you know, in the physical realm, as well as in the spiritual realm, my spiritual mothers of the ages, I bow deeply to you and I thank you as we celebrate women internationally, now and forevermore, for the greatest good of all beings, right? As always. And so Yana was talking about today, she used at the end of the training this beautiful phrase, this idea of massaging the underbelly of your own power. Um, and I just thought that was really beautiful because there's so much healing that happens through touch and massage. And especially um, if you've read the book, The Body Keeps the Score, we can hold body, we can hold trauma in our body long after the traumatic event is over. And massage is one modality, one technique, um, one somatosensory based therapy that can help with trauma because studies show, and many of us know from our own experience and common sense, that talk therapy um, sometimes actually makes it worse. And we need movement and we need physical. Um, physical touch even at times when appropriate and consensual and safe to heal those things. And everyone is different, which is one of the beautiful things about herbalism and traditional healing modalities is that it retains this wild nature. This, it retains its wildness. It retains its biodiversity. And then it can heal on these seen and unseen levels. And one of the really cool things about science is that we do have the science to prove to the really scientific minded community, which God bless you all, we need that too. Or goddess bless you all. We can now use science to, to prove why these certain things work, right? Like cramp bark is just one example or vibrational healing, right? Or different types of somatosensory healings for trauma in the body. And today in the training, um, Iyanla just totally cracked me up and brought so much joy to my heart. And one of the things that she mentioned as we embrace our feminine power is that she, I've, I've known her to use acronyms before, like money, my own natural energy yield, which I really love that acronym. And power, she had a, a separate one in the past, I believe, that started with preparedness. But for today, the acronym that was used in the training was um, power, prayer, obedience, willing, examine and eliminate and reserve. And that this is a key that we can use as feminines to massage the underbelly of our feminine power and, and soothe the beast of our feminine power when it needs to be soothed and allow it to be the beautiful beast that it is when it needs to be so. I said that part, not, a, not Iyanla. Um, and this just touched me so much because she talked about having the willingness to do this work, the willingness to embrace your power, the willingness to do things in a new way. And for me, um, the willingness to be okay with not knowing, the willingness to be okay with doing new things and opening up to those experiences, and that that is a component of having power and transformation. Um, and also that we are then able to be in tune with our inner self as and the divine mind, which are one and the same when in, when in harmony and in tune. I'm, I'm adding a little bit of my own um, opinion and experience to this training and what I took of it. And so again, any of you who are interested, go to Hay House and you can download this for free. Um, I'm just kind of doing a review of part of it. And for me, obedient has been a huge lesson lately and learning that being obedient can be a good thing and that being obedient doesn't always mean someone trying to debase you or you giving up your power 
being obedient doesn't mean that someone or something is trying to, you know, take away your freedom. That obedient um, can be a part of the discipline that you need to remain in line and true to your heart as well as to your source so that you can, through prayer, hear what it is that your source is conveying to you accurately and obediently follow that and, and surrendering in trust to the universe and with faith to that power within and without. And so power, prayer, be obedient to that prayer, be willing to do things in a new way. I wrote down wow, like be willing to be wowed and, and to also then examine your life, <clears throat> starting with yourself first always and examining what's working, what's not working, what are my priorities, examining what needs to go, right? What is blocking me? What is hindering me from my higher path? What is not useful right now? Um, what is preventing the growth? What is preventing the obedience and the prayer and the willingness? What is preventing your power and eliminating that? within and without and again that ties into what i was speaking about in my first video today um, about the ukraine and idiot compassion and shooting rabid raccoons is the willingness prayer obedient willingness examine and eliminate the ability to eliminate from your life what is harming you or what no longer serves the highest best good of yourself and your family you know in in ways that respect human rights and the dignity of the earth you know eliminating the things that are harmful to you whether that be something like sugar which actually works in the brain like drugs or whether it be eliminating toxic patterns or unhealthy um, relationships or things that are not in harmony at this time whether that means eliminating like for me my negative self-talk and believing that I am you know just like a flower um, or someone whom I admire and respect that I'm just as worthy and valuable and that what I have to share and my experience and my story in all its um foibles, fantastic foibles, and wild wonderfulness, you know, is, is worth being here too, and, and valuable, and worth sharing, and powerful, and that anything in my life, you know, fear, they say, the devil is a liar, fear is like, you know, just, just, um, for me, at this point, fear is an excuse, um, it's, fear is like, that smaller part of me, that old part of me, like the story with Rhonda and Iyanla, and that we're able to write these new stories and that we are able to engage in healing practices and we're able to um, find solace and find our own power and use it and not to be afraid of it. And I think, that, you know, people fear often what they don't understand. And I think that historically speaking, um, there's been an element of feminine power and mysticism and that hasn't been understood and therefore has been feared. And if we look historically at the, you know, mass killings, to say the least, of women worldwide, um, there's definitely a fear there that can be healed. And so eliminating whatever is in the way of being your best self and fully embracing your power. And lastly, R, she talked about reserve, reserving some time for yourself, reserving energy, reserving money, that as feminines, we're often taught, we often learn to give, to give even when we don't have anything to give, right? Um, and, you know, even then some, but on, on a beautiful note, you know, when one has a certain type of prayer life or belief system and you can be open to receiving um, the word, that, that glory, that grace, that love from the divine, um, that infinite love, 
um, from the universe to then be able to to serve that to others. And so that's a cool thing about being a vessel, I suppose, uh, as long as you're a, a finely tuned one. So power, prayer, obedient, willing, examine and eliminate. Sometimes it's okay to eliminate people or things from your life, bad habits. That's how we grow, like with the plant. I thought this hibiscus was dead and I, it has somehow been revived, you know, or any of us who grow things or even pruning apple trees, like you have to eliminate when you're editing um, a written work, eliminate this part of the words. When you're designing or engineering something, sometimes there's things that you have to eliminate to make it function at its best. And in the world, Right now, there are some belief systems and some practices and some atrocities happening that need to be eliminated, in my opinion, um, in, in a gentle and powerful way. And like if, if, I, if someone is coming to attack my child and I, I'm going to defend myself. Um, and that is part of my human right. So saying yes to power and saying yes to embracing that feminine power and healing that feminine power and massaging the underbelly of your feminine power. And she talked about after the smackdown, after the smackdown um, in her life when she wasn't being obedient to God, she wasn't being obedient to her heart and to her inner um, knowing and what she was hearing, especially in regards to her ministry. And that, you know, the Holy, the Holy Spirit and the intuition, like those, those are intertwined. And that when we're not following our intuition, our inner wild nature, our, our natural way of being, that that is when things are out of alignment. That is when we don't feel healthy. That is when we feel, get dis-ease, when we are out of ease. Um, and so learning how to heal and embrace that and learning to trust the universe and good people and ourselves and our connection to that energy of love and goodness in the world, that, that that's what we need. That's what the world needs as more people who are healed and, and again, strength in numbers and it, it, reverberates it exponentializes you know um when we're like the domino effect and so even if we're only each lifting up ourselves every day that still counts to the collective you know and when things like what's happening in ukraine happen it can bring us down individually and collectively and that is a wonderful opportunity to come together in our families you know with ourselves and our own morals values ethics, priorities, practices, as well as on a global level, to really use our power, you know, masculine, feminine, or non-gendered, to facilitate peace and love and harmony on the planet. So that things like what's happening in the Ukraine, and things that happened before that, and Things that are happening right now in the world and other places as well, like the school shooting that happened in Iowa recently. That that shit needs to stop, right? And and I think that starts with you know each of us individually embracing our power of love um, versus versus fear. And so. I recommend that you go and check out the Embracing Your Feminine Power series playing right now for free on Hay House. I'm not getting endorsed to tell you this. I just wanted to let you all know that I'm still here. <laughs> I haven't given up yet. Life is good, especially when I have flowers around me and, you know, love of my life's coming home from school soon and keeping my chin up and I'm, I love you all. so. Thanks very much for being here and listening to me. And I look forward to sharing all my delightful and delicious um, offerings of love to the world 
for now and evermore. Amen. Aho, ashe, so it is and so it shall be. Namaste. Go in peace and be a blessing. And don't forget that earth is sacred and you are too. Bye.